you would think that implementing USB Type-C power delivery protocol on your upstream facing port is a difficult task and if I would ask you if you can also support Qualcomm quick charge on top of that then the issue is even more complicated and you would probably be right to think so if you wanted to implement all of this by yourself but luckily you don't have to because there are dedicated chips that can do all of this and in this video I'm going to show you how to use them. So recently I started working on a project which needs USB Type-C power delivery input for negotiating 5 volts and 12 volts and it would be nice to also support quick charge and I basically need the capability to power my board from a standard phone charger with either power delivery or quick charge support or both in an ideal case. This will be an open source project but I'll talk about it in a future video after I build my uh, first prototypes. Now to understand more about USB Type-C and the different power roles like downstream facing port, upstream facing port or dual role port, I suggest you check out this neat application note from Texas Instruments which is called a primer on USB Type-C and power delivery. I will put a link to this in the description below and if all of this is new to you it will help you understand how things are organized under USB Type-C. What I personally need is the ability to sync up to 3 amps with 5 volts or 12 volts selectable voltage levels into my board so that fits under an upstream facing port definition and I wasn't going to start implementing the power delivery negotiation protocol it's just not worth the effort when there are chips specifically designed to do that. After a bit of research I have identified a company named Legendary Technologies from Shenzhen they seem to specialize in building these chips that provide USB Type-C negotiation for various roles. I have contacted them and I've been in touch with one of their applications engineers. They've been very supportive and have provided me with free samples and um, support for implementing their chip, which is very nice. I appreciate that kind of support and it helped me decide to use their chip in my design. More specifically, they have two chips that would cover my needs, the LDR6321 and the LDR6322. Both of these chips can serve as upstream facing port with power delivery, quick charge and AFP protocol support. Uh, they have support for various versions of these protocols, PD2.0 and 3.0, QC2.0 and 3.0. The voltage is configurable in uh, fixed steps, 5 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts, 15 volts and 20 volts. And there are two main differences between these two chips. The first difference is that the LDR6322 variant is capable of adjusting the voltage level dynamically after being plugged in and powered on. The LDR6321 can only do it once uh, when it's being plugged in first and establishes negotiation. The second difference is that the LDR6321 cannot actively request 5 volts uh, if it's connected to an adapter uh, which supports more than 5 volts it will just request 9 volts on its lowest setting. So that difference alone meant I had to use the LDR6322 which uh, can actively select 5 volts because I also need that voltage level in my project. Now to figure out all of this stuff isn't as straightforward as you're being presented here. You can imagine I was working with translated data sheets where things are not always that clear and I don't blame them as their main market is their homeland they don't invest as much in supporting English documentation uh, but nonetheless they have answered all of my uh, questions uh, sent through their application engineer so what I did was to design and build uh, this evaluation board in order to test this chip and make sure I understood how to use it in my design this is basically an evaluation board designed in KiCad. This took maybe a couple of hours to design and layout of the PCB. And I ordered these boards from PCBWay.com. They are the official provider of printed circuit boards for the Volvox channel. And same as always, uh, these uh, came out great. The quality is good. And if you're looking to get some PCBs done, uh, check out their website linked below. After receiving the PCBs I assembled a couple of these uh, test boards one with each of the uh, chips uh, I used uh, a stencil to assemble these which was also provided by PCBWay and I was ready to test them 
The key thing to understand here is that we have three control GPIOs on this chip and they are named VCON0, VCON1 and VCON2 and with a combination of uh, pull down and pull up resistors on these three pins according to the chip datasheet we can select the desired voltage and since we are using the LDR6322 uh, in our final application we can even adjust those dynamically while staying connected to the charger. So in my test setup I have uh, those three control GPIOs going to the uh, breadboard where I can just uh, connect uh, pull up or pull down resistors as needed. We can watch the resulting VBUS voltage on this multimeter. The black USB Type-C um, cable that goes to the input of the board is connected to one of these uh, power delivery uh, compatible chargers. Now as we will observe, if I carefully switch some of those control GPIOs from a pull down to a pull up state, we will see the voltage change on the multimeter. You could have these GPIOs hooked up to a controller and you could be switching these dynamically. Uh, you could have them hooked up to fixed resistors like I'm showing here so you could have a fixed voltage on your board or you can have them connected to some jumpers or dip switches for the user to manually adjust. In my project, for example, I will be using dip switches uh, because I kind of want the user to do the adjustment with the board powered off to lower the risk of setting an incorrect voltage and frying some stuff. Another nice feature of this chip, which I have not implemented on the tiny evaluation board, uh, is the ability to control a VBUS MOSFET that will slowly charge any large amounts of capacitance that you may have on your device, thus preventing an overcurrent condition on VBUS. And I'm making use of this feature on my device, but we'll talk about that in a separate video. So as you can see, it can be as simple as putting one of these chips with just a few supporting passives around it to get that upstream facing port functionality with the ability to negotiate voltages. What's nice about this chip is that it handles everything inside. It even supports quick charge, which is a nice addition to the package. I suspect it's nothing more than maybe an entry level microcontroller. Uh, could be an 8051 based MCU with some clever firmware inside to toggle the various resistor dividers for generating the uh, voltage levels required to signal and communicate the negotiation protocol over the USB data lines. But I would also like to hear your thoughts on that. Let me know in the comments below if you agree with my assumption or let me know if you think otherwise. The bottom line is that it might be easier than you think to get that USB Type-C power delivery implemented into your next project. And I can highly recommend this particular company and their chips. Um, other than a small language barrier, they have been very supportive and I'm happy to be working with them on this project. I will be putting some links to their website in the description below, so check them out. As always, any feedback left in the comments is appreciated. I would very much like to hear if you guys know of other chips with similar functionality. Do mention them in the comments. Thank you for watching this video. And if you enjoy these videos, you can help support the channel with as little as $1 per month via Patreon.